Good evening. Welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist on this, the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm Leslie, and Scott and I will lead the music this evening. Please silence all electronic devices, and let's stand and take a moment to safely greet one another. All of the readings for this Mass can be found on page 1256, 1256 in your hymnal, and the music and readings can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device, if you'd like, on the OSM Parish app, or click the Sunday Worship Aid link on the front of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Presiding and preaching at this liturgy is Father Schoberly. Our gathering song is number 929, Gather Us In, number 929. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we gather today, we are invited to enter through the narrow gate. What does that mean? As we try to figure that out, let us ask God for guidance and for mercy. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, Mosach, Tubal, and Javan to the distant coastlands that have never heard of my fame or seen my glory. And they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries. To Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels. Some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when he reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, 
All discipline seems a cause not for joy but for pain. Yet later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went, making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. And he will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, We ate and and drank in your company, and you taught in our streets. And then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west and from the north and the south and will recline a table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some who are last, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. If you were around last week, uh, Father PJ had the gospel about uh, Jesus saying that he's come to bring fire, not uh, and if he's come to bring fire and division. And at the heart of the gospel is this telling that families will be divided two against three, three against two, in-laws versus family. It, it, it goes on like that. And, and in the middle of that, what he shared with all of you was, was a great story about one of his recent days of vacation when uh, he was with a family and they were telling about one of their kids who uh, the parents could tell he was not getting to sleep. He was not getting to sleep. And they talked to him and and said, well, pray to Jesus and he'll help you get to sleep. And you remember the punchline of Father PJ's homily was after a while, 
they, they noticed he was still up and, and they said, didn't you pray to Jesus? And he said, yes, but he said no to getting to sleep. Uh, and and I, I say that as, uh, as a connection to tonight's. Now, tonight's gospel doesn't begin immediately after last week's. There are some things that happen between Jesus and different groups, and he gets in trouble. And he, but, but tonight's shifts a little bit, but, but it also picks up a bit of a thread. So the thread is God or Jesus do not ever just say only yes or no in answer to a prayer. Prayer can have very complex answers to it. Sometimes God answers in the style of, of, well, wait a while. Or God will say, well, you've got you've to talk to somebody else first. Or anyone, you can pick any style of an answer that you might give a family member or friend. God responds to our prayers in the same way. But we always keep in mind that God cares about us, God loves us, And God wants us to understand that, uh, he wants us to understand that in faith and hold on to that, that we will get the answer to our prayer. It may not be exactly what we want, but it will be the answer that is right for us. Now, I say that tonight because tonight's gospel begins with, try to enter through the narrow gate, come in the, the small door. And you could tie this into camel through the needle's eye, all of that. And the question becomes, as we are more and more connected to God, how does that shape how we enter into our relationship with the rest of humanity? Or how do we relate to our family and friends? How do we relate to any given situation? The entrance into the kingdom of God, uh, for some reason, as I was going through uh, the scripture this week, I kept getting back to Doctor Who. Are there any Doctor Who fans? Okay, three. (laughs) Uh, If you ever get a chance to see Doctor Who, or even just one episode where someone goes into a machine the doctor has called a TARDIS, it's his time machine, Uh, whenever they walk in, from the outside, it looks like a telephone booth. A British uh, strike that. It looks like a police... It looks like a telephone booth to us in America. In Great Britain, they would call it a police call box. So it's about that big. And whenever anyone goes in, it's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. Okay. And and I want to say that that image kept coming back to me as I was thinking of entering through the narrow gate, entering through the narrow way. Because it's very small, but where it leads to is the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God can't be confined to any one place or any one time. It is always bigger than we think it is because God is always bigger than we think God is. At the same time, when you think about entering through the narrow gate, what must you do to get there? And in our world and in our lives, we are surrounded by people who both support us and tear us down. There there are people that like us, there are people that don't like us, there there are people we want with us all the time, and there are people we want to be with somebody else all the time. That recognition of, of how we are in this world doesn't change at all that Jesus says, you have to love everybody, you have to take care of them. But it, it does, especially the people that love us and take care of us, sometimes we can't live without them. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but but ultimately, I think where Jesus is trying to lead us with the narrow gate is that to come into the kingdom of heaven, we have to come on our own. It's like the chick being hatched out of the egg. You can't really help it. It's, it's got to come on its own. And that isn't to say that, that family and friends can't help us can't help us understand the scriptures, can't help us understand our lives. But at some point, we have to be on our own. We have to go through the narrow way. We have to go through it without anyone clinging to us and without us clinging to anyone. 
In our world today, we have a lot of tensions going on. Uh, the world as I would see it is calamitous. It is trying to uh, either weigh us down or it gives us fear or it just pulls in different directions or maybe we have we have those families or friends where everything is working out just great. But all of that stuff that's going on in our, on in our world often tends to make us fearful in the way that we need other people around us. Or, or if we're the person that's kind of leading the charge, we are the person who supports everyone else and holds them together. And in dealing with our world today, ultimately each of us has to come to our own decision about how we are going to work things out. We, we can certainly look you know, if you look at the political realities of our world, and you don't even have to confine it to the United States, where people are at odds with each other, the question that Jesus would always put forward is, are you willing to talk to each other? Are you willing to try and find out what the right way forward is? That, that's always the narrow way. That's the way Jesus is getting us to. But oftentimes when we have so many peers that are supporting us and and we kind of get lost in the rhetoric of what's happening and we sometimes don't think as much for ourselves as we're being asked to because it's a real struggle to deal with our peers it's a real struggle to deal with uh, with lots of pressure coming from different directions and yet that is where Jesus is trying to lead us to when when he talks about the narrow gate when he talks about first versus last, when he talks about readiness for all that, he's trying to get us to see we have to figure it out too. At some point, we have to make it make sense for us. And I think especially as it gets toward the end of the gospel where some who are first will be last and the last will be first, it's that sense that for some of us, it's going to take a longer while to figure it out, how it works for us. It's going to take us a longer while to, to figure out, do I agree with my, my peer group or do I disagree? Um, is my family right? Is, who's, where Jesus is always taking to us is that exact point. How are we relating? What, what, what is the truth of what is going on? And, and the hallmark of Christianity, the hallmark of following Christ is to recognize that love must come before everything else. So the standard of what's going on in our world, what is truth, is based on what is love and what is loving. And this is how Jesus calls us forward. It's that narrow gate that, that says, I may be a little afraid, or, or I may be absolutely certain, but it's that point of that small opening that gets us in there because we finally are able to be face to face with God and say, okay, I'm ready to come. I can let go of this stuff. Um, I can let go of my uncertainties. I can come and be with you. No matter how long it takes, we are invited to follow the narrow way. At the very beginning, when Jesus begins to answer the question, notice that he doesn't actually answer how many will be saved, but instead invites us to look for the narrow way because his way is a pathway straight forward, but we have to remain close to him. And then we enter that narrow gate and we enter the realm of the kingdom. May God continue to bless us as we figure out what's right, wrong, up and down with our prayers, what's right, wrong, up and down with our lives, and where Jesus is at the center of that. And may he bless us and guide us with his love.
Let us together profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Let us call to mind all who are in need, those within our community, as well as those around the world. That the church will be a place of refuge and compassion for all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. On this weekend in the year 1619, the first enslaved Africans arrived in the British colony at Jamestown, Virginia, setting the stage for slavery in North America. May all people continue the work to end racial, ethnic, and religious injustice and discrimination. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Have mercy on those whose lives have been shattered by violence and fear. Grant strength and right judgment to all first responders. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Be with those who have suffered the devastation of fire, storm, and flood. Give grace and support to all who come to their aid, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. As we begin a new school year, grant to all students the gifts of wisdom and understanding. May all who teach share their knowledge with gentleness, patience, and true concern for their students, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will know our love and concern for them and the healing touch of Christ. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who have died, especially Peregrina Kessler, will be welcomed into the eternal happiness of heaven. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in prayerful silence. We pray. Lord, we continue to be conscious of those who join us online for Mass. Let's pause a moment to consider the prayers they may be raising. For those prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God and Lord of all, hear the prayers of your people. Help us to enter the narrow door that leads to lasting glory with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As always, thank you for your contributions that keep the parish running. Thanks to those of you who join us online who contribute via mail or via the give button at the parish website. May God grant you great uh, multiplying to your generosity. God bless. The song during the preparation of the gifts is number 675, To You Who Bow, number 675.
pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to us. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, and in joyful <laughs> celebration we acclaim holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when it's once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, <laughs> saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and I profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ, that has been handed on to us, 
and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit, grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, and your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus himself gave us, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am worthy of you. You should enter under my room. But I will say the word of my soul shall be in
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you for joining us in prayer and worship today. Let us continue to pray for each other, and especially pray for those who are still keeping a distance. Uh, as always, the bulletin offers lots of information. You can get it in the lobby, you can get it online, you can get it through the parish app. A few things to draw your attention to. Registration is open for Falls Sunday Faith Formation classes, and there's also a need for catechists. So if you'd like to help, it would be really appreciated. Uh, the invitation is in the bulletin from the Catholic Extension Society to assist families in Uvalde, Texas with Catholic tuition for their children. So take a look at that one. Uh, Chicago Shares vouchers will be available for purchase after Mass today. These vouchers can be given to people you encounter who ask for your assistance and use to purchase food at several South Loop and other grocery stores in the city as well as restaurants. Chicago Shares vouchers will be available each month on the third Sunday of the month. Stop by the table in the Commons to learn more. Uh, do we have any visitors or newcomers with us for the first time tonight? I'm going to ask you to stand. So thank you for joining us. Are any of you with the American Chemical Society meeting? Okay, them too. Great. So thank you for joining us. And of course, keep on praying for the school. It all starts in earnest on Monday. So thanks for being with us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go to share the love of Christ. Thanks be to God. The recessional song is number 802, How Can I Keep From Singing, number 802. Peace of Christ makes fresh my 
Can I keep on singing? 